Okay, so here's the second word problem, and this is just elasticity of demand. So in order for you to do problems like these, um, you will require a formula, and the formula is the elasticity at a particular price is equal to negative p uh, times the derivative of d of p divided by d of p, okay? So here, um, E just stands for elasticity. P here is going to be the price. And then D of P is just a demand, okay? So usually that's given to you. So D of P is you, it's always gonna be given to you, but this is a formula that I will give you guys on the exam, so you don't need to memorize it. Um, so let's do this problem. Um, oh, right before we uh, uh, do this problem, um, something else to know that if the price uh, the elasticity at a particular price, if this is greater than one, we call the, uh, this elastic. And then if the price at uh, the elasticity at this price is negative, then we call this inelastic. Okay. All right. So if it equals one, it's called unit elastic. Okay. That's when maximum revenue has been achieved. Okay. So what, what we really want to figure out for this problem is what? So the demand function for automobiles in a dealership is given as that. So D of P is equal to three square root of 20 minus 0.001 P. So a really a, a square root function. So where P here is a selling price. So find the elasticity of demand function. So all we're just literally looking for for this problem is just E of P. And luckily we have the, pro the formula. So E of P is equal to uh, negative P D prime of P divided by D of P. Okay, so they don't give us a P, so we're just going to have a formula at the end. So we're just going to have negative P. Now let's take the derivative of D of P. Now this can be kind of crazy because um, we have a square root. So the 3 really isn't going to do anything. So I'm just going to leave the 3 there. Okay, this times 3. Now this I can re rewrite it as 20 minus 0 0.001P raised to the power of 1 half. Uh, to take the derivative of this, remember that we have to take the 1 half and move it over and then subtract it from 1. So we're going to have uh, 1 half, this is going to be times 1 half, I, and then in the inside I'm going to leave this by itself, 20 minus 0 0.001 p. This is now going to be to the negative 1 half power, and now I'm going to multiply this by the derivative of the inside. Okay, and the derivative of the inside by using the chain rule, well this is going to go away, this one, the derivative of p is just 1, so all I'm left with is negative 0.001, so I'm left with this negative 0.001. Okay, now what am I going to have on the bottom? So it's really terrible on top if you just have this crazy um, formula. So let's just simplify this at the end. But uh, let's go ahead and finish this up. So this is going to be divided by just D of P. So I'm just going to write down the whole formula again. Square root of 20 minus 0 0.001P. Okay, so now a couple of things cancel, or just one thing cancels. The threes are going to go away. Um, and now what I'm going to do, I'm going to write down everything that belongs to be on the top. So, um, for example, this thing in orange, it doesn't have a negative, so this is just uh, a negative 0 0.001. And here we also have a negative P. So basically what's going to happen here, because I have two negatives, see a negative here and a negative here, negative and a negative is going to change it positive. Okay, now I'm going to have this 0 0.001 on top, and I'm going to have this P also on top. Okay, now let's see what's at the bottom. So at the bottom, okay, let's figure this out. At the bottom, what we have is this square root of 20 minus 0 0.001. 0.01p. What else is, do I have in the bottom? Well, this one half, well, this is just basically one over two, so there's a two on the bottom. Okay, so let me just write the two right here. And then this negative, I can actually bring this to the bottom also to get rid of that negative. That's just going to be, and I know that a one half power is also a square root, so this is just going to be another square root of 20 minus 0.001p. Okay? Um, what I can do if you if the square roots really freak you out, what you can do is just do it like this, 0.001p divided by 2, and then you have the 20 minus 0.001p to the power of 1 half times 20 minus 0.001p raised to the power of 1 half. And you know that I can combine these terms together. The 1 half and the 1 half just give me a 1, so these two things are just going to have a power of 1. So this is going to be 0.001p divided by 2 
times 20 minus 0.001p to the power of one, but you don't really need to do that. Okay, and that's basically it for that problem. So this was a really crazy um, problem, a crazy derivative, but I mean, it's still doable, just do it one by one. So that's the elasticity. So now what we wanna figure out is find the elasticity of demand at a price of $12,000. So if I charge an automobile or the selling price, the price of an automobile is just $12,000, would that make the automobile an elastic good or an inelastic good? So I'm gonna plug in um, my 12,000 into my P, okay? So this is gonna be 0 0.001 times 12,000, okay? This is gonna be divided by two times 20 minus 0 0.001 times 12,000. Okay, so now let me put all of that into your calculator. So I'm gonna try this out, put that in my calculator and let's see what I get. And what I end up getting is about 0.75. Okay, that's what I end up getting. So double check that with your calculator. Okay, now uh, the question here asks me, is it elastic or inelastic? Well, 0 .0, 0 0.75 is less than one. So this, at this price, at a price, oops, pri oh my god, price of 12,000 automobiles are inelastic, okay? Because our inelastic number, or our number is just 0.75, which is less than one, okay? All right, so hopefully that helps with the elasticity. The problem here was a little bit more more uh, difficult and just in the sense of the derivative. But other than that, that's just basically what, what, what these problems somewhat look like.